ladies and gentlemen i am dr mohammad ali speaking about the technology the future science and technology as you know have great impact on our social economic political and cultural structures science is pure knowledge the aim of science as you know is to understand nature and to reveal the secrets and power of nature technology apply the knowledge of science to meet the needs of mankind technology and industry are complementary to each other therefore if we go through the industrial revolutions we'll get an idea about the service of technology to mankind this is the pre industrial age in the pre industrial age there was no much technology as you know the only technology was using the lever pulley and inclined plane archimedes told I, and i caught give me the lever and a place to stand on so that i can even move the earth such a powerful machine that time was the lever huge constructions happened during the pre industrial age as you can see the colosseum in rome our taj mahal qutub minar and the great pyramids in this mainly this simple technology strengthened the muscle power of the human then comes the first industrial revolution it happened from 1780s to another 100 years about 1800 and the central force was the discovery of steam engine as you know the power of coal and steam engine it actually propelled the first industrial revolution and in this period lot of industries especially the iron industry and textile industry flourished and this has actually transformed the agrarian rural economy into urban and industrial economy especially in europe and after that we could see the second industrial revolution in the second industrial revolution the core discovery was that of electricity and electricity also powered the muscle of human the discovery of electricity followed by more industrialization and the process of expansion of existing industries new industries steel petroleum and other automobile industry railway telecommunication all these happened during the second industrial revolution this also totally transformed the agriculture sector and also the rural transformation into urbanization it continued about 100 years and now comes the third industrial revolution in the industry 3.0 we have the electronics as the core epicenter for the industrial revolution in this period we can see the transistor and from the transistor the integrated circuits we have the pc personal computers then internet smartphone the ict information communication technology all these developed the first two industrial revolutions our country actually missed because mostly we were in the british rule that time and after independence india too realized the importance of industrial revolution and the modern outlook of our first prime minister along with the enthusiastic association with indian scientists laid a very strong foundation for science and technology in india in 1958 the indian parliament adopted a 
science policy to make aware people about the science and technology and also to educate the personals of agricultural industry and defense. The support of the union government continued and we started center of excellence like the IITs and also the IAMs and different organizations also, research institutions, which never even called it as the temples of sciences. So all these actually made a very strong foundation for science and technology after independence. Now, in the third industrial revolution, if you see, we have the leaders of most of the software industries. Indians are the leaders. If you take the Twitter or Microsoft or Alphabet, even IBM, today the CEOs are Indians. So this is actually because of the establishment of a very strong foundation for science and technology by our nation. Now comes the fourth industrial revolution. Fourth industrial revolution, this term was first used or brought into currency by Klaus Schwab, the founder CEO of World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. So the key factor for the fourth industrial revolution is the exponential increase, very large increase in the computational power of the uh, computers and also the big storage, data storage capacity, also the exponential increase in the internet speed. So these have revolutionized the total scenario of the computer industry and led the mankind into fourth industrial revolution. In fourth industrial revolution, we have the artificial intelligence, robotics, drones, IoT, Internet of Things, machine learning, mobile computing, cloud computing, autonomous vehicles, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, augmented reality, nanotechnology, biotechnology, all these developed. Now the thing is that if more than two of these technologies was converged and applied, then that is so powerful to transform or disrupt the existing industries and service models. So that is what happening now. Convergence of more than two of these technologies can disrupt the existing industries, giving opportunities to people to impact at least one million people in 10 years. So the youngsters have opportunities if you converse or utilize these technologies so that you can develop ideas which will impact at least one million people in 10 years. So that will give you a lot of opportunities. As you know, technology is a tool to liberate natural resources. In technology, you could see the scarcity turning into abundance. Let us take an example of aluminium. Aluminium, it has a history of being a very precious metal, even than that of gold. Aluminium was so precious metal that it has a history of, like the king of Siam presented one aluminium spoon to his son in his, as a birthday gift. And also the Washington Monument, tip of the Washington Monument, that is also made up of aluminium. So aluminium was such a precious metal. And what about the status of aluminium now? Now it has a status of a throwaway metal, mainly because aluminium is nowadays extracting by the electrolysis process of the molten cryolite, the class 10 students, and also the students of chemistry could learn that. So electrolysis of molten alumina only generating the aluminium. So large quantity of aluminium 
is uh, available now so that the metal has uh, such a status. Same is the case of diamond. We have artificial diamond. So in this way, if technology is applied, then it is turning the scarcity into uh, abundance, poverty into prosperity. And let us see this particular tool. Now, this is a smartphone. And this smartphone, as you know, has a lot of functions. In this, that 4D of the technology comes. That is, this mobile phone can be used as a camera. It's used as a dictionary, suppose. It is a library. It has books, computer, torch, calculator, and even GPS. Once the GPS was only used by the army chief of United States, and even the computers were stored in big rooms, big halls. So there is a dematerialization taking place through digitalization. That is the first tools. Through digitalization, there is a dematerialization happening. Matter is reduced here, smaller thing fitting to the pocket. And because of that, even there is demonetization happening. Price is also reduced. The price of these are reduced. And because of that, the fourth D comes, that is democratization. So through democratization, now these kind of smart devices are fitting the pockets. It is with everybody. It is ubiquitous. And that is now leading to various industries from their growth from a local and linear into global and exponential growth we can see in many of the sectors. So the impact is everywhere. We could see it in the education, impact of science and technology everywhere. In the education sector, healthcare, energy, manufacturing and construction, food, space, everywhere we have the impact of science and technology. Previously, in space industry, like even our country used to launch satellites of, say, 2,000 kilogram or 3,000 kilogram weight satellite. But now, it is 2,000, but at least 106 satellites we used to take. That means the size is, matter is reduced, but its performance is increased. That is, there is a price performance ratio re reduction so that we can see the industry is totally disrupted. Same we can see in everywhere, in healthcare, in education sector, lot of happenings are there. In the energy sector also, this will happen. Today we are mainly depending on the fossil fuels, especially petroleum and oil industry is flourishing and some of the countries we know, especially the Gulf countries, they depend on the oil revenue for their country's GDP. And once the oil minister of Saudi Arabia in the oil country meeting, he warned that the end of Stone Age was not due to scarcity of stones. That means the petroleum deposits will be large enough, but new alternatives will be there so that you have to go for new al alternatives for your country's economy. And the prominent one is the solar energy. Solar energy for the last 40 years, we have about 350 times uh, price reduction. And in 2017 to 18, the price in India for one kilowatt hour was 2.4 rupees. And today it is again come down. It is less than two. Two rupees for one kilowatt hour solar energy. So this way we can see that solar energy will be an alternative for the fossil fuels. And if the price is further lowered, it can come to uh, very low so that we can see energy will be almost totally free so that the economy will be heading to a post-capitalism age. So along with the solar energy and the storage 
facilities of the lithium ion batteries there will be a revolution in the field of energy also 3d printing will be going to make a disruption in the construction engineering and this is used for making various parts of the uh, like even body parts and also the boeing parts home construction in no time and education is going to again witness a massive change already in the covid 19 we have seen the adoption of technology embracing technology can have lot of disruption also in the field of education and we are now in the 21st century education and here the most important is the critical thinking analytical and problem solving skill innovation and creativity higher order thinking so all these kind of 21st century skills we have to develop and for that there should be a student centric pedagogy than the ordinary classroom teaching there will be a paradigm shift into the student centric activities so my dear ladies and gentlemen we are living in a most peaceful and extraordinary time now world is changing very fast and you can see the global per capita income has tripled life span doubled food consumption is almost 12 times increased and the transportation facility 1000 times increased communication a million times this is far from the year 1330 across europe 40 percentage people died due to plague in 1692 to 94 in france 2.8 million people died because of famine and starvation and about 200 million people died in different wars but if you see over 200 years last 200 years because of the technology the poverty is reduced from 95 percentage into 10 percentage literacy rate is increased from 15 to 85 child and pregnant women mortality have been reduced automobile aeroplane fatality reduced better sensors warning system and satellite communication this along with the deep machine learning is offering more warning system for natural disaster and therefore the number of casualty reduced and we have the moore's law which we consider as the emblem of information age according to moore's law the transistor of an ic will be doubled in every one and a half years and this is the reason for the fourth industrial revolution that is the computational power and the data storage capacity and the power of internet ladies and gentlemen we have a very good future because we are flying with the technology